Well, good morning, everybody. Are you glad to be here this morning? Say amen. All right. Let's all stand together and sing, Look What the Lord Has Done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, look what the Lord has done done look what the lord has done he healed my body he touched my mind he saved me just in time i'm gonna praise his name each day he's just the same look him on and praise him look what the lord has done I want them to play that one more time. I want you to turn around and yell at three people. You look great this morning. And God loves you. You look great and God loves you. what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure, all of my days are held in your hand, crafted by your perfect plan. You gently, you gently call me into your presence, guide me by your home.
read a verse this week, and I wanted to read it to you real quick, and then we'll continue, but uh, it was in Hebrews chapter 9. be familiar with this verse but it said so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation just wonder in the middle of all this stuff in our world are we looking for him are we filled with him that's that's the thing I I read this verse, and I'll be honest with you, I thought, man, Lord, am I leading a life Monday to Saturday, not on Sunday morning. Sunday morning's easy. This is gravy right here. We come in here and have a big time. But Monday to Saturday, am I living a life that points people, that says Christ was offered to bear my sins. And unto them that look for him, I just want to make sure that people, when they see me, Alan, they say, he's looking for something. He's looking for He's looking for the Lord to come back. And I, I just think the thing is, he paid my sin debt. And it just convicted me personally. And I love that verse, what it said. Because it, I just thought, man, this is how we need to be living our lives. Holy Spirit. Are welcome here. The blood this place and fill the atmosphere. Glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. By your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today. Lord, we want to live our lives as an example. Lord, we've, we've got the whole answer to this shooting match in you. Help us to be living a life that's giving that away, that's being salt and light in our community, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everybody that's here today, Lord. They ain't here by mistake. They come to be here. They came expecting to hear from you. If you don't show up in our midst, we've done all this for nothing. Lord, there's a lot of people hurting right now, a lot of people scared. Lord, help us to... To, to, to put all of our hope and everything in you, Lord. Help us to know that no matter what this world does, what catches us by surprise didn't catch you by surprise. Lord, I thank you for the beautiful day today, Lord. And I just thank you for what you're going to do today. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. Y'all may be seated. I was, uh, well, we survived a wedding. I cried all day. I'm about dehydrated. Uh, but I was reminded yesterday about how sweet heaven's going to be. We're all going to be together. I want to I wanna say a special thank you, a special hello to some friends of ours that came down from Lexington, Kentucky, uh, David and Amy and Zach. We've known Zach since he was born. And now he's 14, but when we were in Lexington, these were dear friends of ours, and they came down to surprise Shelby from Lexington yesterday. So thank you all for being here. I'll put your hands together for them. Great people. One of these days we'll get Amy down here and let her sing for you. <laughs> How's that? That's good. Hey, I want us to do something a little bit different. I don't, we won't anoint or anything, but we've got a couple of prayer requests that came in this morning. 
just this morning real early. And they really need us to be interceding for them this morning in prayer. Um, I want us to pray for Gary Light. Gary's been in and out of the hospital this week several times with some things. But today he's, he's really needing us to, to lift him up. So right now, I want us to lift up Gary. Uh, I want us to lift up Mark and Alan. Uh, I want to lift up Sandra. Margaret, Margaret's sister is not doing well at all, right, Joe? And, um, and Sandra and Jim are just sweet people. Is there anybody else that I'm missing here real quick? I know Gary that came in early this morning. Anybody else? Joanne Robinette. Yes, remember Joanne Robinette. Yeah, Martin. Martin, Thanks, Martin. I appreciate that. Martin called me Friday morning, and Randall's a friend of ours, and, and uh, Martin has known him a long time, and he was in an accident, and they, he had surgery, and he's going to be paralyzed. Yeah, it looks or it looks that way. And uh, Martin called me Friday morning. And he said, "He said I need you to do something. I've got a problem." And I thought, "Oh no." <laughs> he said, "I need you to pray for a friend of ours." And he t- we talked about it. So we stopped right there in that field and prayed uh, Friday morning. Uh, and I, I'll tell you what, I've I've gotten in the habit of that. People ask me to pray for stuff, and we we say we will, and then sometimes we forget to do it. And I've started stopping right where I'm at and praying right then. That way I ain't got to worry about forgetting about it, killer. I, I just keep going. And so uh, let's pray for these. Pray for Randall. Michelle? Oh, need to pray for little Devin's hip. I say little Devin. I shouldn't say that. She's a junior, senior, junior. Oh, we'll pray for Devin's hip. We sure will. Let's pray for our services today. Pray that God would... Come and meet with us today. David, won't you come lead us in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful once again, dear Lord, to, to be in your presence together with our church family. Lord, we come specifically right now to lift up Gary Light and uh, Patsy and that whole family. Lord, I pray... Uh, they're in the hospital right now. The Holy Spirit will comfort him and ease his pain and his suffering. Dear Lord, I pray for every individual that was called out by name. And specifically right now, dear Lord, they'll feel the touch and the presence of your Holy Spirit. We believe every word of Every bit of your word, dear Lord, we believe every promise. And we believe that our prayers don't go unanswered. Dear Lord, they may not always be as we had specifically prayed, but you answer our prayers and we're thankful for that. So dear Lord, continue guiding us in this hour. And be with those that we love. Dear Lord, those that are suffering, be with those that love them the most as they care for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We had, uh, I had announced Wednesday night in the service that we were going to have a, a, a vote tonight. And that vote was going to be on proceeding with purchasing this building, and this property. But we're going to move that to, to next Sunday night. And the reason being is I I don't want, this is so important that I don't want anybody to feel rushed that maybe they didn't know about it or didn't have enough time. So we're just going to move it to next Sunday night. So real briefly, what we're going to do is we're going to communicate to you all, the Remnant Church, everything we know, every number, every well, not every number, the, the numbers that are important, that what it's going to take to purchase this building. What it's going to take to put a sprinkler system in. What's it going to take to put an elevator in this thing? An elevator? Well, you see, we have an upstairs. This this place has a huge upstairs second floor. But we only got steps going to it. 
you know, the American Disability Act says we need an elevator. Well, actually, as a church, they say we don't. We're exempt. But I think that's a poor testimony. I don't want to be part of a building where we've got a facility ministering to people and people that not everyone can be accessible to that space. Everybody should. So all those costs are lined up. We're going to lay it all out, and we're going to let you all decide. Now, here's the most important part we need you here. The second most important part is we expect 9 out of 10 of you to vote yes. And what I mean is I just expect 90%. And if we don't have 90%, we won't proceed. Because here's the most important thing we need, Remnant Church. We need a shepherd. We're sheep without a shepherd. So that's why we've been reminding you, pray fervently and fast that we will not miss the man that God brings to shepherd us, disciple us, show us, in fact, what a real church is supposed to be. What do you mean, Dave? Well, one of missions and discipleship, not built on personality, but built on God's Word. Ministering to those in this community and their own. Loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Loving others. Well, in my case, more than myself. And discipling along the way. So, we can find a field anywhere if we have a shepherd. It may not be here. So, I, I promise you, we're not going to be trying to talk you into anything. We're just going to present all the information. And I want the Holy Spirit to guide you. Because if this is where we're supposed to be, 9 out of 10 of us will agree. And if it's not, I don't want to be here. Do y'all? I only want to be where God wants us to be. Amen. Amen. Love you all. I thought he was going to ask me to sing. sing. (laughs) I'm glad he didn't ask me to sing. No, I was thinking about our call to worship uh, this morning, and uh, when uh, Michael Jordan, they were talking about um, asking people around him how it was that he just seemed so fearless and had such a short-term memory when it came to uh, things, failures in his life, and uh, how things didn't work out, and how he was just always able to bounce back. And they talked about how Michael had this unique ability to not... um, live in the present thinking about his past failures not worrying about how things could go wrong but instead how it could go right and i started thinking about us as christians and how we got something way better than basketball or talent but we have the lord jesus christ and because we have the lord jesus christ what it's like to live a life without fear without worry you know it's easy in here to not feel those things and then to walk outside the doors and to start to think about what's going to happen tomorrow and the next day and what could happen and what what might take place but we know from god's word in matthew chapter 6 jesus himself said therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself sufficient for the day is its own trouble and what jesus was really saying was you don't have to worry about anything amen You don't have to worry about anything. And as I watched all these different people talk about Michael Jordan, I wondered what do people say about me? Hmm. Do I act as a person who doesn't worry about past failures and make that affect how I live my life now? You see, if you follow Jesus Christ, if if you're saved, you've been washed clean. Amen. Everything that happened before doesn't matter anymore. You live in the power of the Holy Spirit and He'll take care of you. And as we worship this morning, ask God to fill you with that freedom. Let it change the way you not only sing, but how you hear the message and how you apply that in your life each and every day from here on out. We don't have anything to worry about because He took away everything we could worry about when He died on the cross. So let's live in that freedom. And not no fear. There's enough trouble for today. But I'm thankful we have a God who conquered even that. Amen. Let's pray. God, as we continue this morning, as we continue worshiping, I pray you'd fill those, God, who are going to continue leading us in worship. 
Lord, I pray you fill Tommy as he preaches this morning, God, that we would see you and no one else behind this podium, Lord, that we would see your cross. And we would take that cross, God, and bear it and carry it each and every day this week, reaching out through prayer and reaching out through evangelism, whatever it might be, God, to those around us. Help us to live without fear, God, and not to worry. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessing, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, yes, I'm leaning, safe and secure from Oh, how sweet to walk. Oh, how sweet to walk in the pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from been saved for a number of years if you have raise your hand isn't it sweeter every day the quick the closer we get the more we understand and we still don't know but about that much bob <laughs> we ain't even got a clue but we know enough and it gets a little sweeter as we go along the way yesterday at the wedding it was beautiful man you couldn't have prayed for a better day horse even behaved everything went good the horse didn't poop all along the way everything and I was reminded when I was standing up there I was sitting up there on my swing and I thought man this is just what heaven's going to be like I'm going to be with all our buddies with my family and I was sitting there thinking man all because he loved me and every day gets a little sweeter no matter what life throws us, no matter what bumps we cross, it's a little sweeter because I see a little bit different side of him. He, he, he comes in and gives me a little stab where I hadn't ever had it before. And the longer I serve the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, the more Amen. I'm excited today. Our preacher is going to one of our own. I love Tommy. I've known Tommy since middle school, I guess. And uh, our kids have grown up about the same. And I'm excited about him coming to preach. And I've been praying for Tommy the last two weeks. And just saying, Lord, touch him and use him in a mighty way. Tommy called me back when we were not meeting. When was it? May? About the 2nd of May, and we were talking. He said, Todd, I get up every night at 3 o'clock and pray almost, almost every single night. I get up at 3 o'clock and pray for the remnant. He said, I don't even need an alarm to get up. He 
He said, I just get up and I pray every night at 3 o'clock. And he said, Lord, give me a word. And I said, well, I said, we need to do it. If he give it to you, we probably need to hear it. And uh, that has been May, wasn't it? And then when we started meeting again, we were able to get a time together. So I've been praying for this since May. because I know the Lord's got a message for us. So the girls and him are going to come sing. And then, uh, and then Tommy, you come preach. And we love you. And just let the Lord use you in a big way. Okay?
everyone could see but his destiny was changed when he looked at Christ and said when your kingdom comes remember me oh in paradise that day he stood just like the Lord had said he would surrounded by those who had gone before one said friend how did you come what are the deeds you have done with tears in his eyes i could hear him reply there are no merits to my name and no works that i can claim he who brought me here told me to say I have come by the way of the cross I have come by the way of the cross it is nothing I have done it's the suffering But my guilt and my shame Hopelessly lost I could not find my way Until his glorious light of love Shone down on me His mercy washed all my sin away And what he did for me that day was a price I know he paid by his grace I too can say come by the way of the cross I couldn't get to heaven you couldn't get to heaven we needed a savior and aren't you glad Jesus died just for you now seriously how many this morning has said it and you believe you've said it and you don't want to deny it but you don't you say I just about shouted right there well listen quit aiming and start shooting 
this thing's about over with. We've got to shout on. that. You know what we were made to do, by the way? We were made to praise the Lord. The rocks don't need to praise Him. Uh, the animals don't need to praise Him. I hear the prettiest birds sometimes, Larry, outside the yard. And I'm thinking, how in the world does the Lord take care of those birds? But He does. And yet he takes care of you and I. Get, praise the Lord. Now, come on, don't be quiet on me here. He takes care of you and I, and yet we don't want to praise him. I'm telling you, we ought to just praise the Lord. So let me give you a little exercise this morning. You say, well, that's not how we do it. Well, you better be praising him because that's what we're going to do in heaven. And don't stand next to me. I'll probably make you nervous. And then I hope I stand there like this and watch some of y'all. They said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just enjoying watching y'all. You could have had a little of that one years down here, amen? amen? But do this for me. Raise your hands up real high. Don't be, you know, just a little bit like, you know, hey. Raise them up there real high and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, to God. Glory to God. Heaven's real. Heaven's real. And I'm ready, I'm ready to go. Amen. If you're not ready to go, you need to get ready to go. Because you know what, Wayne, this, this thing is about over with. I don't know about you all, but I can smell it. Uh, I got a dogwood in the front yard, Brian. It, it, it's got three red leaves on it. And I said, that's kind of different. But you know, the Bible says in the last days when the Lord comes, you won't be able to tell the seasons. How many's ever heard that? Come on now. You older folk that know the Bible it's heard this preaching before. But i just tell you one thing. I do not know when Jesus is coming. But I do know uh, he's coming soon. Amen. And I can smell it. I can taste it. And I think if you walk long enough in Mamaw's kitchen and she gets to cooking something good, you can smell that. Oh, boy, what are we cooking today? <laughs> oh, we going to Hardy's? No, Mamaw's cooking something. And you can smell it. But I'm telling you this morning, we can smell that they fix it. Listen, I got tore up yesterday. Can I tell this? I got tore up yesterday. I was sweating. David Merle had to leave and go get his youngins, but uh, I hope he's coming back. If he don't, he ain't my friend. <laughs> but I looked at David Merle and I said, I was sweating like I was pressure washing and you was watching me. I mean, I, I don't know why I got stuck in the sun, but, but all of a sudden, everybody started doing this. And I thought, well, here she comes. And that was cool. That, I mean, that was cool. That horse-drawn, good-looking carriage driver. Amen. And that, that Clydesdale doing his thing. I mean, done great. And I looked at Todd, and after he walked her down there, I couldn't stand it. I, I, I couldn't stand it. I looked at you, and I said, the bride of Christ. <laughs> Just think, folks. One of these days, we're going to get to go to heaven. Bob, and all of a sudden, here he comes. I don't know if he's going to ride on a horse or walk through, but the redeemed are going to be redeemed. So can I tell y'all something that'll mess with your mind a little bit this morning? I'm saved. I'm being saved, and one of these days I'm going to get saved. How many members Mark Grubb saying that? And we're going, what in the world is he talking about? Listen, I'm saved because I've been washed in the blood. I'm being saved because of what he done, not what I do. Amen. And then one of these days, that faith coat's going to come off, Josh, and I'm going to say, saved. I'm here. Heaven's my home. And that's what we sing about. If you ain't excited about it, maybe you ain't got the real thing. Maybe you need salvation. Because, Larry, my salvation ain't based on church membership. It's based on my walk with him. And but with what you've been through, God's blessed you. You're a miracle to be here, Larry. God's blessed you, and you're my buddy. I love to aggravate you as much as I do Eddie Lane. But I'm telling you, God, every one of you has blessed you. Every one of us, we shouldn't even be here. And I was raised in a rough life. I was raised by my grandmother and... And uh, I didn't, you know, feel sorry for myself or nothing. My buddy Jeff Owens is here. Uh, thank you for coming, Jeff, you and Trish. And is that your mama? Y'all better be good to mama. But Jeff knew when I turned 18, I said, when I turned 18, come get me where I'm moving out. Because my grandmother raised me. 
And it's hard on young people. It's hard on grandparents. Say amen. How many grandparents raised y'all? Raise your hand. Anybody here besides me? Thank you in the back. You know, it's hard on the grandparents. They shouldn't have to do that, but they did, and it's okay. Still love my mom, still love my dad, because the Bible says to honor your mother and father. Say amen right there. That's why I love y'all so much, because I didn't have much of a dad, or at the time much of a mom. And then my mom came back into my life, and I love my mama. She will be here tonight, hopefully. But I, that's why I love y'all so much. Because I didn't have that much of that. That's the reason I look at Lynn sometimes. Think, boy, I'd like to be one of Lynn's boys. Them guys is cool. And that's why we ought to love each other. Because we love Christ. We ought to pray for one another. And knowing that just because we look cool don't mean we ain't been through something. But God's knowing our steps. We're here today, Brother Kit. We're here today by no accident. God brought us here. Say amen right there. And I'm glad we're here. I love to worship with you guys. It ain't easy for some of y'all to worship, but you'll get used to it. If you, if you are aiming, quit aiming. Start shouting, praise the Lord. Amen. I think I seen Wayne's leg catch up there one time when we were singing that song. That's a good song, but it ain't about me. It's about him. So I want you to look to Jesus this morning. Praise the Lord. Let's turn, if we will, to Hebrews chapter 12. This is what God gave me for us, and and I say us because he gave it to me. Hebrews chapter 12. And we've heard this verse so many times. But I want us to look at it, and I want us to let God speak their hearts. And and if we're going to scratch around in the Word of God, I guarantee you'll find some nuggets that will help you. In the right time of when you're needing it, it will be there, I promise. But you've got to open up the Word. You've got to take the Word and apply it. And then say about Wednesday or Thursday, God will start blessing you with it again. That's good Word. We don't need to hear from man. We need to hear from God. But Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Wherefore seeing we are... Let's stand to our feet because this is the Word of God. This is precious. Amen. Therefore, seeing we are also compassed with a great, so great a cloud of witness, let, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, he's the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the God Father. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? So why do we not, why do we carry burdens when we could just go into the throne room and say, Abba, Father, Daddy, Lord, I've got a burden. Can I leave it at your feet? Casting all your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. He does this morning. He loves us. He wants the best for us. I've, I've been fussed at all my life to say God's in heaven with a lightning bolt and he's ready to strike you down. But God loves you. He wants the best for you. A lot of them voices came from the devil because he said, nobody loves you. And my grandmother Russell used to say, I love you, and Jesus loves you. And guess what? Jesus does love us this morning. We ought to just shell on that one, amen. Woo! Glory! Jesus loves me! But we sing them little songs that don't mean much. But if God's brought you through something, and God's going to bring you through something, amen, if he ain't already, you've got a peace, and you need that peace. And you need our prayers to love on you, Mark 2. But we are so compassed. This virus has killed me. I hate the mask. Some of y'all need them. That's what Eddie Lane told me. Put the mask back on. Looks better. But I am so compassed with knowing there's people who need Jesus, aren't you? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you again for this, your word, this time of worship. We don't take it for granted. We love church. We love our people. Lord, we love to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord, I'm tired of junk. I'm tired of going to church and not feeling what I need to feel or maybe hoping I could hear some preaching. God, I'm tired without the power of God. We need that today. We need it in our song. We need it in the ones that play the piano, the ones that stand in the hallways and direct folk. We need you today. 
And God, will you speak to our hearts as only you can. Thank you for our folk today. We love you and thank you for what you're going to do. As Josh said, we don't know what tomorrow brings, but you already are there. And I love you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's uh, just look into the word. I won't keep you long. You, You can be seated. The first one I want to talk about in the back to the basics is called Come to Repentance. Now, here's a word you don't hear much in church anymore because nobody wants to admit they're wrong. Come to repentance. It's like finding out you have cancer and wanting to find a doctor that has a cure, a doctor who has a successful plan. But the Bible says, Isaiah 53 and verse 6, all we are like sheep. Every one of us, we have gone astray and every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. See, we all have seen a turn for the worst in these last days. And it scares me, Josh. I'm not going to lie. It's okay to be fearful. It's okay to plan for the worst and pray for the best. But it also makes me want to be as a sheep get close to the shepherd. Because this race we're running in, Bob, it's, it's scary. We need to lay aside that problem that we call sin and repent and say, God, if we do anything in my house, may we do it for the glory of God. The Bible says, Jeff, whatsoever you eat, drink, whatsoever you do, do it what? To the glory of God. And we need to be praying more before we spend more. Say amen right there. We need to be praying more before we worry more or or go to the doctor and find the results out. Cancer is is a terrible thing. I mean, I could be standing here today. You could be sitting there and have a disease that's going to kill you. But the Bible said it is appointed unto man wants to die. We're going to die one day, Bob. It's true. Old people die, but young people die too. You say, I'm going to live forever. When I was 18, I thought I was going to live forever. That's back when we had color Josh's hair, Jeff. And I had hair. Amen. But it seems like time just keeps on moving and we keep on going through and we see our loved ones drop off and people do die. And it's sad. I do not like funerals. I love weddings because, you know, Jesus made the first miracle at the wedding. You said, what did he do? Josh, he met their need. So can you say Jesus will meet your need on the first day when y'all marry? Yes, he will. God is meeting our needs today. He is despising of who we are. But we've got to come to repentance. See, the Lord knows. He sees. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And God sees my heart. He sees your heart. And he knows our intentions even before we do them. I ain't one of these guys that just stay up here. So just hang with me. And I get up a lot and pray. I do. I pray for Jeff and Trish, my buddies. I'm supposed to pray for you, buddies. Say amen right there. Y'all been praying for me? I appreciate it. If you ain't, shame on you. I pray for Todd. I pray for Eddie Lane. I pray for Wayne Bledsoe. I pray for the leaders in the church. Gary. I know your name's Gary because my best friend Gary Atkins is Gary. Bill, I pray for you. Oni, I pray for you. Abel. All my leaders, our leaders, we need to pray for them. Why? Because they're the ones going to push us in where we need to go. They need to be holy. We need to be holy. We need to get the sin out, get the holiness in. Sin still sin in God's eyes. And see, God is going to bless us if we'll probably get the sin out and get get revival. I I don't know that we could have revival in this place just go crazy. 
Because God will bring the money in. When the people get revived, they'll want to give. Say amen right there. But see, when God sees you where you're at every day and knows your intentions or your heart, you can't hide from God. I can't hide from God. But only God knows us where we are. He knows exactly where we are spiritually. And if you are closer to the Lord today than you were 10 years ago, praise the Lord. But if you're farther away, you're backslid. Boy, you don't hear that word much in church anymore. You can hear a cricket right there. Because everybody thinks we're okay and everything's good. But listen, I just soon hear a preacher preach on hell because it may scare some people that they get, finally get right and get saved. I'd want to warn you about it, wouldn't you? The Lord knows, he sees, he, he knows our intentions. See, the church is at a state of complacency. We're just going through the motions and it seems like no power, no Holy Spirit, no repentance. And Jesus says in Luke 13, 3, I tell you nay, except you repent, you will all likewise want perish. But there is hope, see, for listen to the directions of the Holy Spirit. Repent, get right with God. It's like John in the wilderness. Repent for the kingdom of the Lord. He's at hand. He's coming. Repent. Get right with God. Get your loved ones in. We're going to have a wedding day one day. Amen. I don't want nobody to go to hell, do you? It's going to be awful. I don't know that when Jesus says, I'll wipe the tears from your eyes, I do not know that we'll watch them be thrown into hell, into the lake of fire. I don't know that. I heard a preacher say one time, he said, I'm going to preach a message called, uh, Gary, he he said, I'm going to preach a message called when everybody gets to go to heaven. I'm thinking, well, that's crazy. Everybody ain't going to heaven. But you know what he meant? When the dead are raised up, when the bodies have come out of hell and everything stands before God, where is heaven? Heaven's where God's at, say amen. amen. Everybody stands before God and God says, repent. And they didn't on earth. He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And then they're thrown into hell. And then the tears are wiped from our eyes. I don't know how that's going to work. But those former things will not be remembered no more. But there is going to be a great judgment day one day. In heaven, where God's at. And then nothing's going to keep them from coming out of hell to get back to heaven. It's done then, Bob. But how is it that a sinner, unsaved, lost person will be in a denial of repentance and put it off knowing that sin is that problem that keeps them from being saved, the key to salvation, and yet a Christian will hang on to sin and lose their victory? We have a problem, it's called sin, and it's man's nature, but we have a hope in Christ to repent. You know what the the scripture says for a revival? If my people, it didn't say the world. It said, if my people, which are called by my name, Christians, shall humble themselves. Well, there's a lot of pride in churches. That's the problem with most churches. There's power in the pulpit, but it's on the man. And there ain't no humbleness. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their what? Wicked ways, repent. Then we'll hear from heaven. He said he'd forgive their sin and heal their land. Guys, we need a healing. The Bible says in 1 John, and it talks about this. It says, if we we say, this is Christians, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he's just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we've not sinned, we make him a liar and the truth's not in us. We're not even saved. You know who these verses are written for? They're written for you. They're written for me. The spiritual man that has unconfirmed 
an unconfessed sin is there he's in a life of misery. And in God's nostrils, he stinks. Don't get quiet on me this morning. Number two, if we ought to get back to the basics and come to repentance, we must reclaim the victory. Todd, I I am 100% sure God gave me this message for us. I say me too. You know how you know how many times the devil threw rocks at me this week? Look over here, look at that. Act like that. And I had to I had to keep my eyes on him, Bob. You know what he wants to do? He wants to kick us up, trip us up, so that when we come to church, we won't We'll be dead. Guys, listen, I'm tired of dead churches. I'm like Dwight. You've not been nowhere. There's dead churches out there. We don't need nobody to take what we've got away from us in here, and that's the power of God. We need to reclaim the victory. Romans 1.16 says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Of, the, of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. When you look at that verse, he's saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel, Christ's gospel. But when I look at that verse, I think there is power in the gospel. Amen. We don't need programs. We don't need to give away things. We don't need to have somebody come in here, pay them 40 some thousand dollars to structure us. We need the power of God. It'll draw them. This book will draw people. The preaching, the power, the gospel. See, we've fallen away from the power. To get the victory back, we've got to get back to the power. Preachers preach. Listen, I love preaching. Singers sing. I love singing. When the power of the gospel is told, it, it, it has that which God meant to change a man. It has the power to change a woman. It has the power to change a boy, a girl, and uh, uh, that they will never be the same. How many's ever got over their salvation? Raise your hand. How many's never got over it? Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. We need the power. We need it back in our lives. It's the only hope for a lost and dying world. How many's got some crazy neighbors? Raise your hand. All my neighbors fight. But I help every one of them. That's what the Bible said, love the neighbors as yourself. I help myself. And Eddie Lane's mama, bless her heart, and daddy, they used to think I could fix anything. But I don't know if I could or not. But I asked God to help me, and I, I'd like to go fix stuff. Sure, he'd get mad at me because I wasn't fixing our stuff. <laughs> but can your neighbors, listen, can your neighbors depend on you to show them Jesus? If you ask your neighbor to help you do something and you pay them something, did the Lord say give them 50 extra dollars and tell them the Lord told me to give that to you? Well, no, that's my money. Really. Love your neighbors as yourself. That's what the Bible says. Come on now, don't, don't get cold on me. We want the victory back, right? See, as we see these last days approaching, we need to reclaim the victory. Prayer is our open line to the throne. We pray, we hope, we, we know God has a way and we're going to trust Him. But as Christians, we need to have some training for the worst. That comes from the gospel. See, the Bible says that 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the preaching of the cross to them in the world, that's, it's perishing. They're foolish, they're saying. But to us which are saved, it's that power that we need. Brother Mark, we need that. You've seen it growing up. I know you have. Because that fellow right there has got it still on him. I love old Bob, don't y'all? We need to have some more Bobs in here because these young people ain't getting it. 
Tell me why we need preaching. We need to hear the truth. Needless to say, are we ready for what's going to happen in the next days? If Jesus doesn't come in the next six months, six years, what's going to happen? Are we looking to a man, a preacher, a church, a president? Are we looking within us? The Bible says, Philippians 2, 12, Therefore, my beloved, as we have a, always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Here it is. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Let me ask you something this morning, church. Are you rooted in your salvation in faith? See, when it gets tough, and it's going to, and, and Nady and I was talking last night. How many's ever heard one of these days Jesus is going to come? We're going to get out of here. Tribulation's going to happen. Mark of the Beast is going to happen. We're out of here. Yes! But how hot, Eddie, is it going to get before the door opens and we're gone? Because it's starting to smell like something burning now. And knowing that his family was the only ones in that ark that got to safety. But I bet they was coming after them because it started raining and they're going to blame somebody. But when God shut the door, nobody else could get in. And if you didn't know it, that ark was the type of Christ. And that pitch that kept the water out, that was the type of the Holy Ghost. And if he's in you, you're out of here. You're going, but I don't know how bad it's going to get. I don't know if I've heard all about the mark of the beast. Now you're starting to hear a little more about those chips implanted in your hands because you don't have no uh, currency and you just have to wave your hand and my insurance and everything. It sounds like a good idea. And I always thought electronically, you know, I love electronics and stuff like that, Josh, but I always thought there had to be some sort of a pandemic or something to implement this. And who's to say? You say, Brother Tommy, you said it in the pulpit. This because I say it in the pulpit don't mean that our minds can't understand what's going to happen. I know I'm out of here. But how hot's it going to get before they tell us you will get the mark of the beast. You will have no choice. We will have a cure for this pandemic. And to make sure that you've got the cure, you've got to have that mark. Or you ain't going to buy, sell, or trade. Guys, it's starting to really believe what we used to hear back in the 70s. Old-fashioned, Holy Ghost preaching. See, we're not of this world. This is not our home. Matter of fact, Lynn, they hate us because we're Christians. And they hate you and I because, church, we're doing the right thing. They're going to come in here and shut us down one day. If they stick an AK-47 or... or a 223 up in your top of your head and say, I'm going to blow your brains out. If you don't deny Christ, are you going to deny him? I do not know, let me say it again, how hot it's going to get, but it's starting to smell. But I do know we're out of here. And it'll be right on time, Larry. Boy, it gives you something to think about. Not only reclaiming the victory, not only rooted in the word, but receptive for the repetition. Now let me say this, I never get tired of hearing the old gospel. I never get tired of hearing preachers preach the power of God. And I'm ready to go hear a man that has been with God and he's got a message from God. The gospel has a way to get man's attention with the drawing of the Holy Spirit. See, if one day you decide, I want to get saved and the Holy Spirit doesn't draw you, then you're getting saved on your emotions. Seriously. And you don't hear that much preaching anymore, do you? It's, it's behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. That's East Tennessee for fellowship. And, 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 and I will live with him. But you've got to open the door and let Jesus in. But the Holy Spirit has to knock at your door. And if you said no to Christ so many times, George, he may not answer. He may not knock on that door. Or you can't hear it because of the sin in your earwax, ears when we can't hear him spiritually. But guess what? He's still saving today. 
And if it's not here in America, he's saving in the foreign countries. Why? Because they've heard the good news, the gospel. And they ain't got much stuff to put out there as we do in clothes and shoes and boots and cars. And and they they, they just need Jesus. And when they hear the good news, the gospel in these foreign countries, they want to get saved. They want to go to heaven. It's got to be better than what we have down here. We're spoiled. Because when Jesus speaks to our heart, we'll sit here and go, well, Lord, I just know I, I, I messed up in my marriage. And, of course, you guys are perfect, and, and you've never messed up, but I have. And, and God help me in my marriage. You, 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 come, you won't come to the altar and pray because you're afraid. Somebody else say, well, Lord, I knew they was having problems. Well, what's wrong with praying together? What's wrong with two people coming to the altar and saying, Lord, I'm praying for my daughter. I'm praying for my son. I'm praying for, and you get a hold of God and some of the young people going, well, if they're going to go pray, I'm going to go pray. God knocking at your heart's door, obeying God. Holy Spirit trying to do something in your life and you letting him. That's good preaching, Brother Tommy. Receptive for the repetitive. But it amazes me, and we're closing, that we don't want to hear much of the truth anymore. Something you might say, did you know that? Or did, how'd you know that? We all learned it on the internet, but not everything on the internet's true. But I'm guarantee you one thing, you will not find any mistakes in this word. It's true. Jesus said he's coming, Roger. He's coming. He said, if I go to way prayer place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am ye may be also. Hey, can I give you a little thought where God is? That's where you want to be. Right. Where he's not, I promise you don't want to go there. Could you imagine what hell's going to be like, Brian, without Christ? I guarantee you wherever Christ is going to be, Kim, it's going to be awesome. I loved y'all's wedding yesterday. I do. I loved it because it almost reminded me of that day when Christ walks in there. And see, nobody had to tell us uh, which one's uh, Shelby. Ah, there's Shelby. We knew. And nobody's going to have to tell us when we see Jesus as that's Jesus. Who wouldn't want to go this morning? First thing I think of is marriage. See, in the end, how many's married this morning? Raise your hand. I'm not going to pick on nobody. Where's Jim at? Jim, I love you. Don't cover your face. But I love y'all. My girls think that your wife looks like Joe Nana. Is that what y'all call her? And that's their mamma. They love you guys. See, y'all understand how much I love my church family. That's the only thing I know. And when I'd go to Sunday school, and I would cry going all the way to the parking lot, uh, Todd, because my church wasn't the same. And it just felt good yesterday. I appreciate that. I wanted ice cream so bad, and sure, he didn't want to take me. That's the only thing that was left to be the best thing of the whole wedding is ice cream. Say amen right there, Lynn. Say amen. 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 But see, when you think about marriage, in the end, are you faithful? Because the Bible says, thou hast been faithful over a few things. That's what I want the Lord to say. And I know some people are divorced, and I understand that. We're human. Say amen right there. But have you been faithful to the one? You guys have been married a long time. Have, this is what I'm saying. I want to start right, but I want to finish right. I know it sounds free will Baptist, and I, I got friends that's free will Baptist, but I don't believe you can lose your salvation. But that's all right. I'm preaching, and you ain't. Because if you could lose it, we'd be miserable. And I've had friends that, that switched from free will Baptist to real Baptist. And they finally got the victory. Say amen right there. But if some of you Baptists that thinks you can't lose it would act like you could lose it, maybe we wouldn't be so mean. 
closing, listen, we can depend on this Bible and I never get tired of the old gospel story, Jesus and his love. But that marriage is between us and Christ. It's a chance for God to know us and more so us to know him. The Bible says in James 1.22, and I'm closing, but ye doers of the word and not hearers only, Lynn. Deceiving your own selves. Have you ever been faithful to the word of God and said, Lord, I know I've not been just doing what I should do, but I'm surrendering. I love my church. I'm tired. How many's tired of church? Just, I'm tired of church. I want us to have real church. I believe God would say I would that a child of God is found faithful to him over anything in our life. We'll start right. We'll finish right. And if we are faithful to his word, everything else will fall in place. Listen, I recently built a deck. How many woodworkers we have in here? Seriously, raise your hand. You can build a little something. Thank you, I'll call you boys next time. <laughs> Jeff come over and try to tell me how to do it. And I said, Jeff, I don't want you to tell me how to do it. I want you help. But I asked the Lord to help me build this deck. And my buddy Gary Atkins, he said, here's what you need to do. And I followed most of his instructions, Mark. Some of it, don't go over there with a measuring tape. It is, it is off. But as I done it, I learned... Folks, we've got instructions right here. And if we'll great, greatly ask God to do anything in our lives, he'll build it for you. You say, I can't do much. Well, you can do all things through Christ, the Bible says, which strengthens you. What is it you're wanting God to do in your life? What is it important to you right now in your life? You need a job? God will take care of that. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or begging for bread. We're not going to be beggars in these last days. Matter of fact, Glenn, I really believe with all my heart, the Bible says no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. So if God's got his hand on you, ain't nobody going to touch Lynn, so get off his back. You say, that's, that's Pentecostal stuff. I'm just telling you, if God wants you not to have this virus, put you a T-shirt on the doorknob and say, I claim that blood that was over the doorpost for the children of Israel. Well, it don't make sense, but it's the faith of you and I. When we anoint with oil, it's the prayer of the faith that saves the sick. I believe it. Why wouldn't God just bless us if we'll repent and get right with him in these last days? Why wouldn't God just pour the wheelbarrow out on the remnant church if we'll put things in perspective like we're supposed to be? And I may say this tonight, if you want to come back. If not, well, hope you come back. But guess who ain't never changed? God ain't changed. He's still the same. He wants to bless y'all's marriage just like he wants to bless my marriage. I love Brian and Jackie. Y'all my buddies. Y'all understand y'all my family? And we're family. We need to pray for one another. Bear one another's burdens. When one gets sick, we ought to all pray for him. Say amen. Call somebody besides get on Facebook and say, hey, I just had you on my heart, Larry. I just want to call and tell you, I love you. Because this world's telling us every day nobody loves you. But can I tell you this morning, Jesus loves you. He wants the best for you, Eddie, and your wife more than anybody. God wants the best for you. Let's bow our heads. How many say this morning, Brother Tommy, God spoke to my heart. This was for me. God spoke to my heart. Pray for me this morning. Thank you. Two. Is that all? Just two? Three? Four? Five? How many say, Brother Tommy, I'm not sure I'm saved. If I were to die today, I'm not sure. I just want you to pray for me. I'm not going to come back and get you. I'm not sure I'm saved. Pray for me, anyone at all. I'm looking before we 
have a service ending. This is the most important part of the service. Somebody, if they need to get saved, you can get saved today. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made to salvation. You can know Jesus. If you were to die today out on the interstate, you could go to heaven. Without him, you'll go to hell. It's not a place God said I prepared for you. It's a place I prepared for the devil and his angels. Last time, how many this morning say, I know I'm not saved, pray for me. Anyone at all. Lord, you spoke to hearts this morning. You know my heart. I thank you for the gospel. I thank you that we could shout, we can praise you. But, Lord, when it comes down to it, sin's still a problem. And I confess to you, I want to be a better daddy. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better person at work. I want to be a better to my neighbors. And I want to be a better to my church folk. God, we just, we, we honestly, we do. We just get tired of the church thing. And I want us to have real church. And I believe we can have it here at the remnant. I believe we got some good leaders. I prayed for them. We've all prayed. And we're just seeing what you could do here. God, will we just get out of the way and let you do it? Pray you'd speak to hearts. This altar is not a place to make fun of somebody because we knew that they need to come and pray. It's a place to lay our burdens at your feet. Casting all our cares upon you, you said, for you care for us. Thank you for what you're going to do, the victory in Jesus. Thank you for already what you've done. We rebuke this virus in the name of Jesus. We ask these things in Jesus' name.